Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about why people are really getting silver. What really is deep down in them, it's not like, you know, what people think. If people think they get silver for certain reasons, and on the surface, those are the reasons that are really valid, but there's other things. The silver holder is actually a different breed of animal. And, um... <clears throat> Like people get silver on a surface because they understand, you know, surface reasons are. They understand that the fiat money is going down. They're going to be printing more and more money. Silver is going to hold up its value better than fiat dollars. Uh, the debt situation in the United States is going to cause a default at one point in time. It's going to kill the currency, so you want to hold physical hard assets. But, you know, in reality, what silver holders are, there's the thinking outside the box, and that's not what the typical average person does. They never do. The light bulb will go on later on with the average lemmings, but, you know, it'll be too late for them, and those are going to be your customers someday. <laughs> that's the way I look at it. You know, they'll be buying high, and you'll be selling high. But, um, <clears throat> trading for another hard asset. Now, I just want to point out that silver holders are actually anti-establishment and you know that's been some concept that's been thrown around a lot in the 60s you know I was never a person that was into um, you know the hippie movement or anything like that but it's like I realized that that was something that had a lot of different aspects to it you know like for instance uh, when they had the anti-war movement and the hippie movement a lot of that was fostered by the establishment themselves the big money in this country they're looking to create dissent, to change the society. That's what they were doing. They were actually looking to change society in a very shrewd way. But you know, some of the people that were in the anti-establishment movement actually picked up exactly what the establishment's game was. Like, especially in the Vietnam War. The establishment in this country was actually, you know, opening up ties to Russia at that time and during the Vietnam War. And through the Lend-Lease program, giving them money through, like, loans, guaranteed loans through the U.S. government. So they could buy a lot of materials from companies in the United States to encourage capitalism, quote-unquote. And guess what they were doing, really? They were just getting a lot of money for their businesses in the United States, being paid for by loans that came from the U.S. taxpayer, which eventually got um, forgiven by the U.S. government. And... This money and goods that went over to Russia was used to f partially fund the North Vietnamese. So basically war was being funded from both sides during the North Vietnam, the Vietnam War by the USA. And the establishment knew this. I mean, that's, that was their whole game. But some of the anti-establishment crowd on the bottom, you know, the little guys figured it out. Most of the hippie movement did know this. Only a few knew it. Very few knew it. They understood. They were, the, big, the big thing you would see on the media is they were just anti-war. Most of the hippie movement didn't understand the connection between the establishment and the anti-war movement and just how the establishment was funding both sides of the war. You know, and that's exactly how it works even with anything that's alternative or anti-establishment, including the silver community. Like, I realized that within the silver community, there might be some bad people, you know? There might be some bad people that are on the top of the silver community movement. And uh, they're basically looking to steer people in a certain direction. That may be the case. You know, I don't want to be critical of any smaller guys that maybe don't understand that, you know, how it's all working. But I think I understand how it's working. Now, I want to point out something else about thinking outside the box, just like silver people do medical marijuana and a lot of times people who are into silver they're into anti-establishment anti-establishment medicine they're against you know the big energy rackets they're all against the whole gamut because it goes along with the whole mentality that's why you're getting physical silver you understand what the professional racket is on the top that's raping the middle class and you know the medical racket is another one now <clears throat> With medical marijuana oil, this can cure cancer and everything else. It's been proven, you know. It's been proven. It's been proven over and over again out in the field where it actually works. You know, people try it. And they say, hey, I got cured. I don't know. We, well, it just went away by itself because I used this oil. I don't know. Maybe that's not a cure. But, you know, it's almost going to take some kind of balls right to the wall where people are going to have to stand up and say, to hell with the bullshit. 
You know, it's like if your life is on a line and you got no recourse to any kind of, you know, gazillion dollar treatments out there. And you know this med this uh, health care system, it ain't nothing about health. This is about controlling the masses. You know that. The national health care and I'm not saying it because Lindsey Williams said it. The light bulb went on immediately when I saw this because the same kind of game they played in Russia too. It's like the psychiatric treatment was the thing that treated the dissidents. They don't go to prison. They get loaded up with drugs till their brain gets straightened out. You know, that's what the health care system is in the United States. So, um, <clears throat> that's what it's going to go to. <clears throat> but what it's going to take is basically dissent. Dissent. And, you know, you don't want to play the game with medicinal marijuana like, you know, the way the establishment wants you to play it. You know, they want you to smoke this stuff a lot so you're nice and calm and you don't revolt. What I say is, you know, if you got a cancer victim in your family that's dying, I don't know why, you know, if it was me, I'd be growing this plant illegally and everything to save the life of one of my family members. I would. I would. And, you know, and if I got to protect that by force, I would too. Because the way I look at it, the establishment is trying to murder, torture somebody in my family, and I would protect them. I would protect them. And, you know, I presented something before about it surprises me that, you know, you got these medical people out here, these professionals, and you got these guys in the, the robes. They could be pastors, priests. They got all these racket organizations out there to public respects. And I personally think these guys, you know, in religion and in medical and all this type of stuff, they're the biggest bunch of crooks gone. And, you know, the public, you know what they don't respect, for the most part. I mean, in certain circles, there's respect. But the general public doesn't really think much of, like, the mafia, organized crime, and biker gangs. And, you know, they realize they're into a lot of, you know, things in society like drugs, you know, illicit drugs, prostitution, gambling, and that type of stuff, right? Well... The way I look at it is like this. <clears throat> you know, it's all about image. Like, if you look at this picture with the doctor and you got the priest giving the last rites, if you put a bunch of uh, bikers over here doing the same thing, it would, you, the public image would be they're molesting her. You know, here that she's being treated by caring doctors and given last rites by a priest. You know, it's all image. And, you know, one thing I said is the best thing to bring image to a group would be if they distributed this marijuana oil and charged money for it. Good markup. Good markup. But it would cut deeply into the pockets of the real establishment professional scumbags in this country. It would cut into their pockets. And it would bring a hell of a lot of prestige to the group that brought it to the forefront. So, you know, I was thinking a little bit about this and... Uh, I wasn't going to say too much, but I'm going to say something real briefly. I know my, <clears throat> my sister's uh, husband was like one of the, he's dead now, you know. But uh, he's one of those, uh, you know, meth cookers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about drugs. I mean, I'm like squeaky clean, you know. But, um, you know, the best man at the wedding was one of them, you know, his Pagan's MC in New Jersey. So got the idea that, you know, it's probably going to have to be a group like that, that if something like this gets rolling, it would have to be somebody with the balls to get it rolling. And, you know, it would bring a lot of prestige to the group at the same time. So, you know, I'm thinking that that may be the route to go. And you're never going to see this medicinal marijuana oil come to the forefront from the professional established medical uh, arena because medicinal marijuana oil, cannabis, was around in all these concoctions back in the 1800s and even up to the 1930s. It was around all over the place. You're not going to see the established medicine get into this, push this. They'll give you lip service about it, but they won't do it. It's gonna, actually going to have to come from the quote-unquote criminal organizations in this country. And, you know, the way I look at it is this. Those t criminal organizations are not that criminal. You know why? Because they're providing for something 
that the public needs. I mean, yeah, there's things like illicit drugs, and that's not right. I don't like illicit drugs because I don't. I mean, it's like you know, a lot of those things can hurt your body. You know, I'm I'm into healing, man. I really am. I really am. I mean, I'm not into screwing myself up. I don't like to drink or anything like that. I'm pretty squeaky clean. But I also realize, you know, there's a lot of other things that they provide to the public that the public just you know, if it becomes sanctioned by, like gambling, for instance, you know, you might have illegal gambling, you know, on race, on horses and stuff in New Jersey, right? And um, they'll have that. But, you know, the lottery system is probably, you know, stank, sanctioned by the state is probably the biggest ripoff going. I mean, you know, you got better chances betting in the uh, illegal sector than you do with this, the freaking lottery. You know, but if it's sanctioned by the state, it's fine. And, you know, this is why these organized crime units exist. It's because they're actually giving the public a better deal in a lot of ways. And, you know, this is one thing I always thought about because medicinal marijuana oil is never, ever going to come out into the forefront by, you know, the established medical people. Hell no. They're all about money. They don't give a shit. And, you know, I know that that's the same thing with the organized crime people are about. The biker people are about a lot about money. Well, the right, well it's about bikes. <laughs> but, you know, the point is that it could be extremely lucrative, too. It could be extremely lucrative to any group that actually thinks outside the box. And there is a big public need for this. It's not just, it's not a recreational drug. Marijuana oil is not a recreational drug. It's a cure. It's a cure. It cures things. Okay, we need more testing. You know what? If they test, they tested this thing on so many people already and it worked. It has worked. And, you know, it's just amazing that... See, this is sometimes... I don't think a lot of these people that are in, um, you know... Well, I do realize one thing. In the illicit drug trade... A lot of the reason it goes on in this country unabated is because it's actually pushed by the top of financial establishment, the people that control our government, the banking system, and it's all tied together. In other words, that goes right down to the bottom. You know, it goes right down to the guys that are actually doing this stuff and moving it around. So it's sanctioned right from the top by, you know, the establishment itself. And see, if you actually are pushing medicinal marijuana, you are bucking the establishment to the max. So, you know, it almost has to be the most revolutionary 1% of the 1% that would actually be able to even uh, get the inertia of this ball rolling. It would take a hell of a lot. It would take a hell of a lot. But it would bring a lot of prestige and image and, um, you know, from the public to that organization, not to, lent, not to mention money. I think it's a tremendous idea because uh, <clears throat> most people, I mean, the average person isn't going to do this. The average person isn't going to, you know, they don't have the balls to do this. They don't have the balls to do it. And the average professional, they're never going to buck the system. They're never going to buck. They'd have to, like, if a doctor went out and said, you know, I'm going to freaking give marijuana oil to all my patients and stuff for all these different ailments. He wouldn't be a doctor in two seconds flat. He'd be outside the freaking establishment in two seconds flat. He wouldn't be part of the establishment. So it's going to only, it's probably best that this whole ball get rolling from the people that are most anti-establishment there are. And that is going to be the supposed criminal elements. So, uh, you know, that's what i got to say, you know. <laughs> Support your local organized crime and biker groups. That's all I gotta say because uh, it's probably gonna come more from organizations within like that than it is gonna come from uh, anybody on the top, you know, in the AMA, the FDA, and all this other bullshit. It's gonna have to be a matter of just like they say on a Nike commercial just do it. Just do it. You got the balls, just do it. If somebody in your family's dying, get them this stuff to cure them. That's the way to do it. So, you know, in a way, this is like a silver update. But it's more like, why are you into silver? 
It's more like what I'm displaying is here right now. And I'm just talking. It's bullshit. You know, just throwing some bullshit out here. But you know what I'm saying. I want people to keep in focus. It's the whole attitude why you're into silver. Most people are into physical silver. Our major anti-establishment. And you should be anti-establishment for a reason. Because most of the time, they're trying to screw you over. You know, they're not a bunch of goody goods on the top out for your best interest. They're not. They're not. Think outside the box. And, you know, I'm beginning to wonder just how, if anybody, the light bulb really went on to anybody, you know, that deals with a lot of this stuff, that it wasn't sold to their general public. You imagine trying to, like, you know, as a matter of fact, look at it this way. Say, for instance, uh, and, you know, this is the problem with the general public, too. You don't have the balls, but... You know, say for instance, a person was uh, caught distributing and selling medicinal marijuana oil. <coughs> well, if they go on jury trial, whatever it is, they get a trial by jury. The jury, despite whatever the law says, the jury can say not guilty. The jury doesn't have to find you guilty. If they can have all the evidence in the world. They can have all kinds of pictures. They can say this, this, and this. If the jury says not guilty, you're not guilty. And you know why the jury should say not guilty? <coughs> because you're doing good for people. You're saving their lives. You're saving their lives. And that's how laws get changed. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's an appeal for all the 1% in the world to unite against the bullshit. Maybe that's the way we got to do things. So, you know, it's not just about silver. It's about the whole thing. It's about silver. It's about hemp. It's about medicinal marijuana oil. It's about bringing down the biggest establishments, not just the financial establishment that's running roughshod everybody, but the medical rackets and the oil energy rackets. There's ways to bring them all down. You know, I mean, even like bikers, you think about it, you know, hey, you got a bike, you freaking get really good gas mileage, right? Well, suppose you're running on hempoline. You know, we'd be running, what, 50 cents a gallon? 50 cents a gallon? You know? Taking medicinal marijuana oil. He'd be living 300 years old, you know? 300-year-old bikers running around like they're 20 years old doing whatever the hell they want because they feel good, right? That's the way I look at things. You know, think outside the box. And, you know, the 1% on the top the fine of, the t of the established world, they're like overly ripe apples waiting to be picked. That's the way I look at them. And they're going to fall right in our hands.